Hello and welcome in the first video in a series about Secure Cator. This time I will show you how to implement a simple REST API and secure it with JWT access tokens. To be even more specific, we're gonna learn how to implement a simple REST API, what are JSON web tokens and what does the authentication mean, how to generate JWT tokens, validate them and authenticate users, and lastly, how to read data using the JWT principle. In the upcoming videos, we're going to continue this topic and learn how to add a refresh token flow and how to add role-based access control to Cator. So hit the subscribe button, leave a thumb up and let's get to work. But before we start implementing our Cator app with JWT tokens, let me quickly explain what exactly authentication is. In essence, it is the process of verifying the identity of a user or system or device to ensure that they are who they claim to be. It is like having a secret code to enter a club. Let's imagine we want to get into a cool party and at the entrance, there is a bouncer checking everyone's membership. To prove we belong, we provide a special password. If the password matches what's on the list, we're in, otherwise we cannot access. In the digital world, it's the same idea. We need to confirm our identity with a unique key, like a password or JWT token, to access our email, bank account, or like in our case, any resource through the exposed REST API. Of course, authentication is not synonym for authorization, but we'll get back to that in the upcoming videos. With that said, let's navigate to JWT.io and let's learn a bit more about the JWT tokens. In simple words, JWTs, also known as JSON Web Tokens, are nothing else than one of plenty of existing ways to authenticate users. Just like with our previous example, in real life we can use our ID, passport, or in other cases some secret word. Here, the JWT is like a digital secret handshake on the internet. When we sign in using our username and password, the server gives us a special JWT and later we can use it to access REST API. This way, we don't need to specify such vulnerable data every time we want to make a request. What are the other advantages? Well, they are safe, compact and allow us to hold information. As we can see right here, the encoded value of JWT can be easily decoded. The header typically consists of two parts, the algorithm used to uh, sign the token and the type of the token, in our case, JWT. In the next part, we have payload, which contains claims. Claims are nothing else than information about the entity for whom the token was generated, right? In our case, we have a subject, a name, and issued at. So the subject simply refers to whom the token refers to, the name indicates the name of the user in this case, and issued at is a timestamp uh, when the token was generated. Of course, we can add right here a lot of custom data, and we'll see how to do that later. Lastly, there is the signature part, this one, and it is used to verify that the sender of the JWT is who it says it is and to simply ensure that the message was not changed along the way, right? So with all of that said, let's navigate to the Cator project generator and let's start by specifying the necessary details. Let me type right here, start.cator.io. Excellent. The first thing we can change will be the project name. So I'll call it Cator-JWT. Nextly, we can adjust project settings. So uh, firstly, let's specify that build system will be Gradle Kotlin. Of course, you can change that to Maven or Groovy if that's the preferred way to uh, for you. Nextly, we can update the website. I'll go with codercy.com. So the artifact right now will be com.codercy.caterjwt. Uh, with cater version, I will stick to the default engine and configuration. Uh, I will leave the default too. I can deselect add sample code and following, let's click right here and add all the necessary plugins. So basically to work with uh, Cator and JWT tokens, we'll need authentication, JWT content negotiation, uh, some serialization library, I will use Kotlinx and routing. So let's start maybe with the first one and I'll add routing. Let's hit add. Excellent. We can see that one plugin was added. Next, let's search for, for Kotlinx, realization, excellent. If you want to work with JSON or Jackson, then of course you can do that. I will be using Kotlinx. This time we can see that two plugins 
were added. Let's take a look. We can see that not only Kotlin externalization, but content negotiation was added too. Following, let's add the JWT. JWT, authentication, add. And again, we can see two plugins added, authentication and authentication JWT. And that's all we need at this point. So with that done, let's hit generate project. And as we can see, the zip file was downloaded to our PC. So following, let me navigate to the folder and let's extract the zip file. Right mouse button, extract all, and I'll put it right here. Great. As the next step, let's open up IntelliJ IDEA and simply import our project to it. So on this page, I will simply need to click open and navigate to downloads, users, Coder CE downloads and right here there is our project with this black icon near to it. Let's hit OK and the project will need some time to fetch all the necessary dependencies and build. We'll see right here that some processors are going so let's wait until they finish. You can pause the video right now and get back when it's uh, ready for you because this may vary depending on your internet etc. After some time the project build and we can finally navigate to the main directory right here src kotlin and when we open up the project we should see that there are some plugins already configured inside the plugins and inside application kt so to be on the same page i will delete the plugins directory and let's navigate to the application kt let's get rid of these two and this one so I would like to show you how to set up everything from scratch. As the first step, we will expose the API responsible for user management. So firstly, let's create the model package and implement the user KT class. Let me click on the com.codrc, right mouse button, new package, and let's call it model. Nextly, again, right mouse button, new Kotlin class slash file, and let's name it user. This will be a data class which will consist of three fields, ID, username and password. So let's start with ID, val ID. I would like this one to be the UUID from java.util. Nextly, the username, val, username of type string. And lastly, the password also type string, val, password, type string. Following, we must add the class responsible for user storage and retrieval. So to do so, let's add the repository package and put the user repository inside it. Right mouse button on com.codrc, new, package, repository. Again, right mouse button, new, Kotlin class, and this time let's call it user repository. User repository. So normally we would put a code responsible for talking to the database right here. In our case, to not lose focus from the clue of this article, which is authentication and cater with JWT, we will simply introduce a dummy repository, which uses the mutable list to store users in memory. So let's start everything by introducing a mutable list, private val users, and this will be mutable list of users, mutable list of let's specify the type user and let's open up excellent i would like to introduce four methods find all find by id find by username and save so let's start with the first one fun find all which will return a list of users equals and simply return users nextly the find by id fun find by id ID of type UUID. It will return a nullable type of user because we can either find him or not. User equals users first or null it ID equals to the ID that we pass to our function. Next, we will do almost exactly the same with find by username. So fun find by username. Uh, this one will take one argument of uh, string, username, string, 
and returns nullable user. Similarly, so users dot first or null it username equals username. Lastly, the save method which we'll use to add new users to the list. So fun save. It will take a user of type user and return a boolean indicating whether adding was successful or not. In our case, this will be always successful. Add user. Control Alt L to format the code. Excellent. Of course, just wanted to note that in our dummy repository, we store user password in the plain text. In real life scenarios, we should always encrypt it before persisting. And if you'd like to learn a bit more about different encryption algorithms, then you can check out my blog post in which I explain uh, pbkdf2 hashing. So with that done, let's introduce the service layer in our project and let's click right mouse button right here, new package service and let's add a new class called user service. New Kotlin class file user service. Excellent. This one will make use of the implemented user repository and again expose four methods. So let's start by introducing a constructor private val user repository of type user repository. Excellent. Firstly, let's add the find all method from find all, which will return a list of users equals. Let's navigate right here, add plus enter to import the user and this one will simply invoke user repository find all. Next is the find by id fun find by by id id of type string this time which will return nullable user. User repository repository dot find by id and right here id equals uuid We'll make use of this static method from UUID to convert the string value into UUID. Excellent. Nextly, let's add the find by username phone, find by username, username of type string, which again returns a nullable user type. And this one will simply evoke user repository too. User repository dot find by username and let's specify the username. Lastly, let's add the save method, which will uh, try to save a user, and if it is successful, we'll return a user. Otherwise, we'll return null. So, fun, save, user of type user, and returns a new label users. Let's open up the function. Firstly, I would like to make sure that the user with uh, a given username does not exist anymore. So to do so, let's try to find it. Val found user equals find by username. And let's specify this username from uh, the user object passed to our method. If the user is null, then we can save. Otherwise, we should return null. So what I would like to do here, return if found user equals null, then I would like to save a user, user repository dot save and save the past user. Of course, I want it to return him after all. And again, if there is some user existing with this username, I would like to return null. So else null. Control Alt L to format the code. Excellent. So I know it may seem a bit overwhelming at this point, but trust me, if you structure your project from the very beginning well then this will pay off in the future nextly we'd like to expose our endpoints but before we do that let's take care of the request and response classes so let's start by creating the request package and implementing the user request so firstly let me add a new package routing and inside this package let's add a new one request Following, let's add the user request class, which will be a data class. New Kotlin class slash file user request. Excellent. Let me convert that to the data class. So I'll start with constructor and put the data keyword in front. 
I would like this one to contain only username and password because the API client should not be responsible for generating the identifier. So val username of type string and password also of type string. Additionally, we must annotate objects that we want to serialize and deserialize using the serializable annotation. So let's do that. Serializable from Kotlinx serialization. As a result, the serialization plugin will automatically generate the implementation of kserializer. So similarly, let's add the response package and user response. Right here, new package. Firstly, let's delete the request so that we don't create this package inside the request. And let's call a new package response. Again, right mouse button, new data class this time. Don't forget to scroll down a bit user response again we must mark it serializable so let's start with that and the user response should uh, contain two things the identifier and the username well id of type uuid and username of type string well username of type string and as we can see intellij is complaining about the uuid so if we would try to use this class as it is, we would end up with the following error. So let's try maybe to run the application and see what error do we got. Application KT, run application, and let's wait for it. So we can see that the cost does not compile, and the reason is that Serializer has not been found for type UUID to use context serializer as fallback explicitly annotate type or property with contextual. What we would like to do here will be implementing our own UUID serializer. So as the first step, let's introduce the util package and add the UUID serializer object this time, right? Right mouse button right here. Sorry, maybe I'll close this first. Right mouse button right here, new package util. Excellent. Right mouse button, new Kotlin class. This time let's go with object and call it UUID Serializer, UUID Serializer. Excellent. This object must extends K Serializer, K Serializer, which requires us to pass type of generic UUID. And let's hit Ctrl plus E and import everything we need to uh, take from that. When it comes to the deserialize function, we must specify how to deserialize our values. So the return type must be UUID. So simply UUID from string and right here decoder, decode string. When it comes to the descriptor, I will specify the primitive serial descriptor and we'll pass the UUID name. So let's get rid of to do primitive serial descriptor the first argument will be uid of type string and primitive kind dot string primitive kind dot string excellent lastly we must specify the function responsible for serialization again we'll use encoder so home encoder dot encode string and as the argument we'll simply specify our value as string, value dot to string. Lastly, we must get back to user response and instruct the plugin to use our implementation whenever it wants to serialize the ID field. Let's go to user response, navigate right here and specify the serializable annotation again on this field, serializable with equals and right here specify the UUID serializer, UUID serializer class. Excellent. Right now we can see that the code compiles successfully. Nextly, we must register serialization plugin. When working with Kator, we must explicitly specify the plugins we use, right? There is no component scan based on the dependencies which you may know, for example, from Spring Boot. So as the next step, Let's add the serialization KT to the plugins package. So again, a new package, right mouse button, new package, plugins, right mouse button, new 
Kotlin file and let's call this file serialization. Isation. Right here, in order to configure serialization, we'll make the extension function for application fun application dot configure serialization. Let's open up right here. Firstly, we must import the application. Uh, please specify the kator server dot application one. And right here, we'll install our plugin. So install content negos, sorry, negotiation. Let's open up and JSON. So this plugin content negotiation has two tasks. Firstly, it negotiates the media between the client and server and additionally serializes and deserializes the content in a specific format. In our case, we specify the JSON format, but you can also pick XML, CBOR or protobuf. But this is not everything we need to do. We must get back to the application KT and simply invoke this function now. So let's go to application. Let's hit enter right here. Configure serialization. So with all of that being done, we can finally expose endpoints for user management. Let's implement the routing KT class inside the routing package. Routing new class. This will be a file routing. Just like previously, we must introduce the extension function. So fun application dot configure routing and I would like to pass the user service here. User service of type user service. In here, the first thing we need to specify will be routing and let's specify the user root. Root path slash API slash user and in here, I will add the user root to which I will again pass the user service, which we'll implement in a moment. User root, user service. So to sum up, this way we instruct Kator that whenever a request is made to slash API slash user, it should look for a handler inside the user root. So following, let's get back to the application KT and register our routing. So we must configure our routing. So configure routing, which requires us to pass an instance of user service. Val user service equals user service, which requires us to instantiate user repository. Val user repository equals user repository. Excellent. This one does not require anything, but we need to fix the code there. User repository, user service. Excellent. Nextly, let's add the user root inside the routing package. New Kotlin class slash file, file, user root. This time we need to make an extension function for root. Phone root dot user root. And as you remember, this will take the user service. User service of type user service. I can bring that to the new line and I must import the root out plus enter. Excellent. Let's open up brackets. And right here, we'll need to specify the handlers like post, get, etc. for every endpoint we would like to expose. So as the first one, let's start with the post one. Post. And in here, the first thing I would like to do will be to read the uh, API client uh, payload. So let's start with val well, user request equals call dot receive. And right here, we need to specify the user request, user request. So this way, the JSON payload sent by the API client will be converted to the user request instance. Nextly, I would like to simply create a user and if this is not successful, I would like to return bad request. Val created user equals user service dot save. As a user, we would like to specify the user request converted to user model. So 
user request dot I'll introduce the extension function here to model right here add plus enter and of the third option we can create the extension function so user request and this will be a private one and will return the user let me get rid of the brackets equals and we'll simply instantiate a new user from our user request so user and right here, the ID, I would like to generate a new random UID, UID, random UID, we can use this static function. As a username and password, I would like to simply forward the values that were sent by API client. Username equals this username and password equals password. Password equals this password. Control Alt L, let's get back to our function. So, as you remember, the save method returned a user if it was uh, created successfully or a null value. So whenever we get a null value, I would like to respond with 400 byte request to the API client. So Elvis operator return call respond. And right here, I can simply specify the path request HTTP status code. Sorry http status code dot bat request excellent so to rephrase it will be either created or the api client will get 400 bat request so lastly if everything is successful i would like to return 201 created and i would like to pass the identifier as the uh, id header so the first thing i would need to do will be call response dot header this is the way we can uh, specify the response header manually. Name equals ID and value equals created user dot ID dot to string. Excellent. Lastly, I would like to specify the uh, response status code. Also, we can do that here. Call dot respond just like we did with bat request. And right here, message equals HTTP status code dot created. Control Alt L, excellent. Nextly, let's specify the endpoint which will be responsible for returning all users. And this will be the get endpoint. So similarly, let's hit get, open up the function val users equals user service dot service dot find all and we can simply respond with our list because this will be either uh, the list containing users or an empty list call respond message equals users map because this is a list and i would like to introduce again the extension function which will be responsible for mapping from user model to user response so user to response let me scroll down and introduce the function private fun user dot to response returns user response and right now let's instantiate user response right here we have two fields the id and the username id equals this id username equals this username excellent so again, we simply fetch the list of users and map each entry in the list to user response. Lastly, let's introduce the endpoint which will be responsible for getting users by ID. So this time we can open up, but as the first argument, we can specify the ID. Excellent. Let's hit enter. And this time we can see that the identifier will be passed as a part of the URL. We can use the parameters in order to get the value of the ID passed here. So val ID of type string equals call dot parameters. And let's try to obtain the value of ID. However, this one is nullable. So whenever we get null here, we would like to return bad request, right? Return get call respond and HTTP 
status code dot but request. Great. The next thing I would like to do will be to fetch the user from user service. If it is found, then excellent. We'll simply return this value mapped to user response. However, when this is not the case, we will return not found. So val found user equals user service dot find by id id elvis operator again return at get call respond http status code dot not found and lastly call respond message equals found user to response control alt l excellent so although these are only three endpoints we see a bunch of interesting things here in cater when we want to read the json to uh, any object we invoke the receive method whenever we want to respond with any response body or http status code then we use the respond method whenever you want to add some header then you must specify call dot response dot header specify the name of the header and the value of the header itself lastly in order to uh, read the part of path variable just like you may saw for example in spring boot then you must specify call dot parameters with all of that done it would be great to figure out whether everything is working as expected so let's run our application and let's test these endpoints in my case, I will be using Postman. We can see that it started at localhost at port 8080. So let's open up Postman. Let me close this bar. And right here, let's click new collection. I'll call it JWT Cater. The first endpoint I would like to use will be the post endpoint. So let's hit add request. Let's change to post. And let's call it create user. Right here, we need to specify the URL. So it will be HTTP localhost 8080 slash API slash user. When it comes to the body, we can click right here, row, JSON. And we need to specify two values, right? The username and the password. So username will be some username password. Let's make it PWD. Let's hit send. Excellent. We got status 201 created. When I navigate to headers, I should see the identifier of the user. Great. So as the next step, let's hit Ctrl plus S to save this one. Let's hit call. Ctrl plus C on this, Ctrl plus V, so that we don't have to uh, copy this all values manually. And now get all users. Excellent. Right here, let's change from post to the get endpoint. And for the body, we can get none. Let's hit send. Wonderful. Ctrl plus S. Now on the left side, again, let's click Ctrl plus C, Ctrl plus V. And now we will implement get users by ID. And right here, what we need to do will be to specify the ID of the user that exists. So let me copy this value and put it right here. We should get 200 OK and the found user. Excellent. Now when I change the A to B, for the ID that does not exist, we see that we got 404 not found. So at this point, we can see that we have a fully working API. And what we need to do now will be secure it with JWT tokens. So let's get back to IntelliJ. And as the next step, let me close this one. Let's stop the application. And navigate to resources application conf. If you've ever been working with Spring Boot, then uh, there is the application properties file. Similar, 
file is the application.conf in Kator. And right here, what I would like to do uh, will be to change these values. So let's get rid of them. And to be on the same page, let's add one by one. So the first value I would like to add will be the audience. Don't worry, in a moment I'll explain what each value is responsible for. So audience equals my audience. The next one will be issuer, issuer equals HTTP local host. Nextly, realm equals my realm. And lastly, the secret, secret equals, and right here, we will source that value from environment variable. Whenever you will be working with some vulnerable data, you must not hard code them and you should source them from environment variables. In IntelliJ, it's easy to add it, so let's do it right now. Let's click on the configurations, edit configurations, and this is our configuration that we were using to uh, run the app previously. What I can do right now will be environment variables. If you have some, like one environment variable, you can do it right here. Alternatively, you can get, open up this window and specify multiple variables right here, but I can do it right here. And for the secret, I will use some dummy data, uh, which should be long enough to be secure, right? Okay. With that done, let's get back to our configuration. So the audience simply describes the recipient of the token. So this will be in our dummy example, my audience. The issuer is nothing else than the entity that issues the token. Realm is an optional parameter providing additional context or scope. And lastly, the secret is nothing else than a secret key used for token signing and verification. Again, please remember to never hard code this value. With that done, we can navigate to the service package and let's add the JWT service. So right mouse button, new class JWT service. Excellent. Nextly, let's add a constructor which will have two uh, argument. The first one application and the second one will be user service, which we already implemented. So private val application of type application. The next one private val user service of type user service. Excellent. As the first thing I would like to implement will be the getconfig property uh, private function, which will be responsible for reading values from application conf and making objects from them. So let's introduce private fun getconfig property path, and this will be string value equals application dot environment config property right here we specify the path and lastly we get the string value from it control l plus l to format and again in order to read any variable from application conf file we must reference the application uh, instance and that's why we injected that through constructor to our jwt service so as the next step let's uh, get the secret issuer audience and realm to our class. So the first one will be secret private val secret equals get config property jwt dot secret. Why jwt? Well, because our JSON file right here starts with jwt. Control plus D and control plus D once again and once again. Now let's get the issuer. Issuer. Similarly, issuer here. When it comes to the audience, similarly, we'll get the audience. Lastly, we must get the realm. This realm will be referenced later in other places, so this cannot be private anymore. Let's make it public, realm, and just like we did previously, realm right here. 
So after that, we must create an instance of JWT verifier and configure it. So this class in simple words holds the verify method, which will later verify that a given token has not only a proper JWT format, but also its signature matches. So let's introduce this as a new property, vol JWT verifier. Again, let's make it public of type JWT verifier equals JWT require algorithm dot mac256 and let's pass our secret. Nextly I would like to specify the audience, the issuer and this will be all and we can build our JWT verifier. So with audience, audience, issuer, 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 and lastly, let's hit build. Control Alt L to format. Excellent. So, as I mentioned, this JWT verifier, we specify what audience and what issuer uh, should the JWT token have. If any of these will not be matching, then the request will be rejected with 401 unauthorized. With that done, let's introduce the create JWT token function. So this function will be responsible for taking the login request, uh, finding the user by username and creating the token if everything is uh, successful. So fun, create JWT token login request of type login request string And right now, let's open up brackets. As the next thing, let's introduce the login request to our project. So let me click Alt plus Enter on this. And you can go with Create Class Extract to a separate file. And right here, we can specify where we would like to put it. So I would like this to be the com.codersy.routing.request package. Excellent. By default, unfortunately, this is the standard class. So let's make the data class from it. Data class. Let's introduce the constructor. And the first thing, if you remember, serializable. The login request itself is not record science, so it will contain two fields, username and the password. Val username of type string, val password of type string two. Two. Excellent. Let's get back to JWT service and let's implement our function. The first thing I would like to do will be to find the user. Val found user equals user service dot find by username login request dot username. Of course, this is nullable. So whenever the found user will be null or the password will not be matching, will return null. Otherwise, I would like to create a new JWT token for you. So return if found user is not null and found user password equals to the password from login request password, then I would like to start creating the JWT token. Otherwise, return null. So let's create the token then. JWT dot create dot with audience. The first thing I would like to specify will be audience. Then we'll add issuer, some custom claim, and when it expires. So audience, we'll simply specify the audience here. Issuer, similarly, with claim. In order to specify any custom claim, we must invoke this function, username, and for the username, I would like to provide the username from found user, found user, username. Nextly, we need to specify when does the token expire. So depending on your needs in the real life scenarios, you need to consider how long you would like the JWT token to expire. And this also will depend varying whether you will be using the refresh token flow or not. So expires at, and unfortunately this one must be the date format system 
current time millis plus three millions six hundred thousand thousand excellent so with this configuration we simply state that we would like this token to last for one hour if the user tries to use that after 60 minutes last then you will get 401 unauthorized and with all of that done we need to sign our token with our secret so sign again algorithm and let's provide the secret let me double check this algorithm matches with what we require so simply right here we sign this and right here jwt verifier will be using the exact same algorithm and secret to verify whether the token comes from us lastly i would like to add the custom validator function which we'll later use to an additional validation so after that let me clip fun custom validator and this will take credential of type jwt credential as a return type i would return jwt principal later you will see how to use that in our api jwt principal of nullable type let's open up brackets excellent so the first thing i would like to do will be to extract the username from the principal so val username equals extract username let's introduce a new function create function and it should return string value nullable wonderful let me get rid of brackets because this will be a one-liner equals and just to rephrase in our previous step we set a custom claim username with our user username so right now we will do nothing else than simply reading this claim so credential dot payload in order to access the payload get claim username dot as string when we extract the username the next step i would like to do will be to found the user if the user is found and audience matches i will return jwt principal otherwise we will return no so val found user equals username let and we can use the reference to the function user service find by username this is quite a nice syntactic sugar in kotlin which will simply invoke the find by username and providing the username if it is not null so nextly let's simply return found user let and now we'll check whether the audience matches so we will introduce a new function if audience matches from our credential then i would like to return jwt principal jwt principal credential and provide the payload otherwise else i would like to return no and that's basically all so add plus enter create function audience matches and right now we'll simply check whether the uh, jwt credential contains our audience credential similarly payload audience contains and our audience control alt plus l and that's basically all we need for jwt service the next thing i would like to do will be to simply install authentication plugins so let's add the security plugin inside the plugins package let me find it plugins new kotlin class slash file security file excellent similarly let's introduce the extension function application configure security wonderful alt plus enter let's import the valid one this is this one and this function should take jwt service as an argument so let's go here jwt service excellent so let's configure our plugin we need to start with authentication authentication and the next one will be jwt inside it we need to specify three things uh, we will configure realm 
verifier using the JWT verifier we already implemented and the custom validator function which we also implemented in the previous step. So let's start with realm. realm equals JWT service dot realm verifier. This is the function JWT service dot JWT verifier and lastly validate validate creden shell and here JWT service custom validator and we'll simply pass our credential control add plus L and that's basically all the configuration we need here but additionally I would like to show you that in one project you can have multiple validations in our case let's simply select everything from the JWT control plus D to duplicate what we've just selected and right now we can specify and name another auth, which later we could use to reference in particular endpoints to use different authentications in our one project. Again, in our case this will be exactly the same, but it's worth for you to know if you would like to provide multiple authentications in your real life scenarios. So just like we did when we implemented the serialization plugin, we must get back to the application KT and let's configure the security configure security right here I would like to provide the JWT service so I must add here val JWT service equals JWT service and the constructor took two things the application but before we do that let's import the JWT service and this took two things this because we need to uh, specify the application instance and the next one will be user service, which we already instantiated. So right now for our configure security, I will simply provide the instance of JWT service. Perfect. At this point, we have everything we need to expose a new endpoint slash API slash auth, which we will use to get JWT tokens for our Kator app based on the past username and password. So as the first step, let's go to the routing file and inject the JWT service and prepare a new route. So right here, I can simply go here, JWT service, add plus enter, and you can add a parameter from here. So now when I hit control and navigate to the configure routing, we can see that IntelliJ automatically injected that. So just like we did with API user, we will do with API auth. So, route and this time slash API slash auth. And this should have its own uh, handler called auth route to which we'll provide JWT service. So, following, let's add the auth route just like we did with user route. So, routing new Kotlin class slash file auth route wonderful. I don't want this to be a class, so this will be simply a file and we must provide the extension function for root. fun root dot off root of root. Let me import it, import class root. And right here we must inject the JWT service, JWT service. Let's open up brackets and this will have one endpoint, so post. And the first thing we need to do here will be to read payload sent by the user to this uh, API endpoints. So, val login request. If you remember, we need to invoke the receive function from call. Call dot receive dot and right here login request class. Let me fix the typo login request excellent the next thing i would like to do will be to simply generate the token and to do so i must uh, simply invoke the create jwt token function from jwt service val token equals jwt service create jwt token login request and that's all for now so this one returns a nullable string and whenever it is null we should return an authorized Otherwise, I'll simply return with the token value to the API consumer. So, token, let, and right now, call, 
respawned just like we did previously and instead of uh, instantiating a new object we can simply use a hash map hash map of token to it to provide the token value otherwise lv separator call respond and right here http status code dot unauthorized wonderful so again to rephrase firstly we read the payload and instantiate the login request we provide that to our create.jwt token which returns a string or null if it was not uh, able to generate the token if it was not we return 401 unauthorized otherwise we simply return the token value So at this point, we can get back to Postman and test our application. Firstly, let's run it or rerun if you haven't stopped it yet. Wonderful. As the next step, let's open up Postman. And when we fetch users, we will see that there is no users. So let's create a new one. Everything successful. We can get the identifier of the user. Let's double check with another endpoint. Wonderful. At this point, Let's copy the create user, add it, and let's call it off. The HTTP method post remains the same, but instead of slash API slash user, we must navigate to off right now, right? Similarly, the body is almost the same. So right now, the username, some username and the password should get us the token, right? Let's check that. Excellent, we can see that the token was generated successfully. Let me double check and for example, let's change the password for one unauthorized. Now let's check uh, with valid password, but invalid username. Again, for one unauthorized. Wonderful. So we can see that our functionality for getting the JWT tokens works. So what I would like to do now will be to simply secure our get all users endpoint and get users by ID using two different authentications. When it comes to the create user endpoint and off endpoints, they will remain public. Well, because simply you don't have the token if you want to create a new user or before you authenticate. So let's get back to IntelliJ first. Let's stop the application. Let me close this bar and let's navigate to user root, right here. In Kator, if you want to secure your endpoint, the only thing you need to do is to simply specify the authenticate function. Authenticate, excellent. So let me copy this endpoint inside it. And for this one, you can do something like that. Let's copy that, authenticate. Let's paste that. And right here, let's specify the name of the authentication. Let me get back to the uh, plugin security. This was another auth. Let's copy this value. Get back here, another auth. So whenever we will try to access this endpoint, this authentication will be used and this one will be used for the get user by ID. Later, I will show you one more thing and how to access JWT principal. But for now, let's run our application, create a new user, authenticate and see that we need to provide the bearer token uh, for this endpoint. So let's open up Postman. I'll start by creating a new user, getting the bearer token. And now let's try to get all users without any token, right? We can see for one unauthorized. Similarly, 401 unauthorized for the second endpoint. Wonderful. So what we need to do now will be simply get this token value, copy it, in Postman, go to authorization, instead of inherit, go with better token, and right now you can provide this value. So when I hit send now, we can see we can get the value and 200 okay. Similarly, for this endpoint, authorization, better token right here instead of 401 we will get 404 because the id is the old one that's valid let me copy the appropriate value get users by id send 
wonderful. Actually, let's get back to IntelliJ and see logs because this is an interesting thing. Inside here, we can see that the slash API slash user slash ID endpoint is authenticated using the another of, which is what we set right here. And this confirms this is working as expected. On the other hand, when we see the root for the all users right here, API slash user, we can see this is authenticated using the default. Yep, this is the name for the authentication without any explicit name provided. So at this point, we authenticated both endpoints. I would like to add one more thing to the get by ID. So what I would like to do here will be to allow user to only fetch information about himself, right? So we need to verify the identifier from JWT token and see whether this matches the identifier of the found user or the requested user. So what we can do right here will be simply if found user and when its username is not the same as the username from the JWT token, then we'll respond with not found. Does not equal extract principal username call. And let's introduce this function. So add plus enter create function. And right here, we'll return the string value. Nullable, of course, right? Wonderful. Let me get rid of this equal sign and let's obtain the JWT principal and read the claim username just like we did previously. So call principal of type JWT principal. If you remember in JWT service, we instantiated this principal with the payload from the authenticated token. Now payload get claim username and as string. Control Alt L, extract principal username, and right here let's add the necessary change. So whenever the username does not match, we would like to respond with not found. So again, return get call dot respond http status code not found. Ctrl Alt Alt to format the code and let's rerun the application. Ctrl plus F2, Shift plus F10 or simply Shift plus F10 is the shortcut. And now let's try to create two users to verify that what I said is valid. Firstly, let's create some user. One and let's maybe even second user. Nextly, Let's get all users. We can see that we have three users with three usernames. So I would like to authenticate as the first user. Let me copy this value. Get users by ID. First, let's update the token. Secondly, let's get the identifier. Wonderful. So right now I should be able to get this value, right? This is collect. However, when I try to access the data of another user, I should get 404 not found. Wonderful. So at this point, we can see that everything is working as expected. And basically, that's all for this tutorial on how to implement a REST API using Kator and Kotlin and how to secure it with JWT access tokens. If you'd like to get the full source code for this project, then check out the link in the description for this video. Lastly, if you enjoyed this tutorial, then don't forget to leave a thumb up and see you in the next videos. Bye!